Before leaving the village to go in search of the Roman settlement, I decided to bring you here to St Werburgh's Old Church, the centrepiece of this ancient landscape. It is here where for centuries the ancestors of Warburton came to worship their god, offer prayers and pray for good fortune and a healthy harvest to see them through the bleak winters that lay ahead. Many graves are to be found here, bearing the family names of generations past. Here we see a pauper's grave, consisting of a simple timber with a small bronze plaque, possibly erected with donations from the villagers back in 1872. It's below this tree here that in the 19th century stone coffins were unearthed. Coffins going back to the date of the Priory, at least 1300 AD. They can still be seen today and lie inside the old church near the back wall. The oak pulpit dates to around 1600 AD and bears traditional Elizabethan designs. From here, the priests would have preached their sermons to the villagers throughout the centuries. Indeed, on an oak pillar near to where the pulpit once used to stand was a frame holding an hourglass, which, in the days of the Puritans, were almost universally used to guide the preacher in regard to time. No doubt many a worshipper had looked longingly at the hourglass awaiting it to empty and the sermon to cease. On some of the pillars cow's horns were fixed serving the purpose of pegs to which the parishioners could hang their coats as they came to pray. Below the floor of the church lie the bodies of many people including five rectors and members of the Drinkwater family. The octagonal stone font carries the inscription William Drinkwater 1603. William lived at Bent Farm and was the bailiff of the Warburton estate. Many of the gravestones inside and outside the church carry many old messages and curious inscriptions almost obliterated by time. Back in the year 1151 Adam de Dutton's father, Sir Hugh de Dutton, granted half of Warburton to the Abbey of St. Werburgh. The old rectory still stands today, but is now used as a private house. The old doorway into the brick-built tower, built in the 1711, at the top of the tower resides a bronze bell, cast in 1575, and the initial of the maker are still cast into it, which is unusual. The ancient church of St Werburgh is believed to date back to 915 AD and was possibly the first settlement in Warburton for the Saxons, hence the name St Werburgh. The early Saxon settlement at the site of the old church would have been an ideal place, with plenty of firewood from the surrounding forests and a plentiful supply of fresh water from the nearby River Mersey. It could well explain why we recently found this wonderful bronze Saxon belt buckle close by. With a runic design, this is the first ever piece of Saxon metalwork to be found in the village. But Warburton has a much more ancient past dating back to the Bronze Age, the Iron Age and the Romans and they lived on the settlement on the hill just away from the old church. This trackway was once the road into Warburton, an ancient road leading from Lim all the way through to Warburton and on to Warrington and beyond. But it was the Roman invasion of Britain that was to prove decisive in putting Warburton on the map with the Roman army building a military fortlet on the hillside close to the present day Warburton.
Chester was indeed Roman Britain at its best, and the fortress that once occupied the land was undoubtedly magnificent. The newly formed Roman gardens are well worth a visit and they give you the chance and the opportunity to examine closely the stonework that once stood and was seen throughout Roman Chester. The Roman walls of Chester still stand tall today and bear testament to the great feat of engineering and construction done by the Roman army during the first century. But the Roman army had conquered continents across the world and Britain was to prove to be no exception. After all, Caesar himself had tried several times, including his attempt in 54 BC, but each time with little success. It wasn't until 43 AD when tides permitted and conditions were favourable that the Roman Empire finally gained its first firm foothold onto British soil. By the year AD 60, the Romans had reached many parts of southern and central England and were now gaining strength and a foothold in the northwest of England. It was around this time that Warburton was to see its first major Roman activity with the army arriving itself in Warburton to take over the land. They firstly constructed a temporary camp before proceeding to build a timber fortlet on the site that would have imposed on the landscape and housed around 80 Roman soldiers, one commander and one centurion. They were to gain full control of the crossing point of the River Mersey and the well-established road network which ran through the area. There is no doubt that the high ground of Warburton had been used as an important road system and crossroads since the Bronze Age, at least 2000 BC. 